and welcome to DC Today. Uh, Brian Seitel here with you and uh, coming to you from our uh, studio here in New York City in our office uh, on 44th and Lexington and uh, um, had a uh, down day in markets, although, you know, before markets opened, we were up a little bit on futures, about 140 points. There was a CPI number released around 830 Eastern that was basically in line really with expectations. We had a, uh, a headline number that was up 0.4 uh, and 0.3 was expected, basically the same in a 3.7% year over year on headline CPI. Uh, core, which strips out things like volatile food and energy out of that, was uh, 0.3% um, for the month and then 4.1% uh, on the year. Um, so maybe a tenth higher than expected, but basically in line. There was a 30-year treasury auction today that, that went a little worse than expected, meaning that the rate was higher for it to, to close. And so interest rates kind of moved higher on the day. And I really think that was what drove stocks lower, at least. Um, bonds were lower, so yields were up. The 10-year was uh, up 10 basis points on the day, closed at uh, just over 470 on the 10-year. So we've got a little move at interest rates. Like I said, CPI inflation reading was, was basically in line. And I think it's notable really that inside of that number, you know, we still, and we've talked about this, but we still have an owner's equivalent rent figure in there that is a, a monthly average. So it's, it's a pretty lagging number on uh, inflation of, of housing. Um, and uh, it's at a 7.1% rate inside of that number, which is a third of the calculation. So if you think about a third times 7.1, it's like a two and a half percent figure added into the, you know, 4.1%. A year over year number. So if you strip the 7% owner's equivalent rent down to something normal, which, you know, the Zillow rent index right now is around three. So if you just chose something more real time instead of an average going backwards, but what people are actually paying in lease payments now, say it's a 3% inflation rate, then you get a total CPI number of right around the Fed target, which is 2.2. So on the day, stocks were down, but um, the futures, at least on Fed funds, really didn't move a whole lot. It's um, for the most part, um, about a 70% chance the Fed is, is done for the next, call it three, you know, through the remainder of the year into the following, um, into 2024. So again, I, I still think that we're there on peak rates. I think the amount of financial tightening that we've seen uh, over the past couple of months has done the work for them as far as them needing to do another rate hike. And I think we're in a restrictive stance at this point to sort of bring down inflation. And that's what they're trying to get. We, we had a jobs number today that came out in line with a jobless claims number of 207. Um, so still labor market is very healthy. That's not a bad thing. That's a good thing. Inflation number's coming lower. It's kind of sticky because again, that, that sort of housing number that's inside of it there. Um, on, the, on the market, on the stock market, today technically is the 12 month anniversary, I guess we can call it anniversary of the low of last year. So October 12th of 22, markets were at a low and uh, intraday the following day, made it a little bit lower mark, but then sort of started moving higher from there. And we're technically up 22% from that period of time of 12 months ago in the S&P 500, but it's, and we've written about this, but it's driven by basically seven stocks, you know, and those seven technology stocks that were down a ton in 2022 are now rebounded and are up in 2023. And they make up a third of the S&P. And so that's where you've got this sort of, technically it's a, a bull market, you know, it's a greater than 20% move from the low. But I think it's notable during that up period of time with what you've seen inside of the market, which is what I just said, it's really driven by a couple of companies. The rest of the market has not participated. So if you look at the percentage of stocks that are above their 200 day moving average, for example, which would speak to momentum in markets, it's only about 44%. So most of the market hasn't experienced it. And in fact, if you take out those seven big companies that again went down a lot last year and up, up this year, the remaining 493 on average are about flat on the year. So uh, small caps had the smallest, you know, bull run off of the market low ever. You know, they're only up about 5%, which would be really unusual. Um, and things like uh, a sector like financials is actually down 18% from, from a low. So you had a 20% move up in S&P or 22% and then a down 18% financials. That's also never happened before. Um, but I think there's an intuitive explanation for it, which is that we've never gone from zero to five and a half percent in one year either. 
So there you go. Interest rate sensitive sectors of the market like small cap stocks, which borrow more money um, and are, are more susceptible to, to interest rate shocks and things like financials with an inverted yield curve aren't making money. And, and I think that's reflected in the, in the stock prices. And, and technically, let me back up, financials are making money. It's not that they aren't. I, I guess it's more of a, a, more of a stock uh, story with it. But an infl- uh, in, uh, inverted yield curve is not good for the sector overall. So those are some of the intuitive reasons why. And I put a note in there, which is that the good news is if you look forward now and we kind of know that rates probably aren't going to go from five and a half to 11 over the next 12 months. So so the same thing won't repeat. then I would suspect that you'll see sort of an opposite occur um, going forward, which is some of the lagging parts of the market. Um, I'm using financials and small caps as an example, but there are others are likely to outperform. But either way, the point is that going forward, it's an active management story, and I think it'll be more important um, now more than ever. And I don't think it's normal that you have an entire market off of a market low driven by just a couple of companies like that. So with that, I'm you know we're in New York uh, this week, or I am this week and next week. We have our sort of annual portfolio man- money money manager meetings lined up. There's more than a dozen, 15 probably, something like that, meetings next week, including some dinners with some great research folks that I'm really excited about. We have a symposium we're attending, a symposium we're attending with Jay Powell, the Fed chair, which should be really good. And so there'll be lots and lots of notes and lots and lots of discussions, but it's something that we've done for many, many years. And um, it just has a ton of value inside of the investment committee. So we're here rocking and rolling and doing that. And, uh, and, and so stay tuned there. Um, as always, reach out with questions. Um, had a lovely drive out to Connecticut to see some clients today, so I'm going to call it a day here in a, in a little bit. But uh, it's been great as always talking with you. I um, hope you enjoyed the read and reach out anytime. Thank you.